Greetings and welcome to Caribbean Vanguard. If you are a returning viewer, welcome back. So St. Lucia is getting ready to host the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award Dominica. St. Lucia is fixing to host the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award of Dominica. Now, you may ask, why is this topic important? But well, you're about to find out. Because far too long have stuff like this been happening in the Caribbean and no one has been calling it out. And that is why Caribbean Vanguard is here. We are going to start calling out the subliminal and the subtle things that has been happening in the Caribbean for the past few years that are causing us to lose the Caribbean little by little by little. If you take notice, you will see that the things that are happening on one country in the Caribbean are also happening on other countries and they are done by the same people, different organization, but they are all connected. So that is why I always tell the common people, do not get caught up into the nationalism crap because all you're doing is isolating yourself on an island with visitors and settlers who are connected globally. The Duke of Edinburgh International Award, Dominica, is a youth-oriented training program for those aged 14 to 24. It focuses on four major concepts, skill development, physical recreation, community service, and adventurous travel. The program is intended to foster self-development through activities completed over a specific period, preparing young people for life regardless of their background, culture, physical ability, talents, or hobbies. This year, approximately 40 young people will attend this activity. Now, this may sound all good, right? For people looking at this from a religious perspective, from a kumbaya perspective, you will say, oh, what's wrong with that? What's wrong with that is that it is like a grave. It is beautiful on the outside, but it is very messy on the inside because the Caribbean people has not been given the opportunity. Better yet, we have not taken the chance and the opportunity to rebuild ourselves, to gain our identity or to connect with each other, to build that cohesiveness with each other. But somehow people has convinced us to build a unity with them. They are unified but we are not unified. Think about that. Imagine going into a battle where your team is not unified. So we can try to join hand with as much people as we want. We can try to join the BRICS. We can try to join all these different associations and countries and programs. But we will always lose until we fix ourselves. According to the national director's release, doing the award is a personal challenge and not a competition against others. It pushes young people to their limits and recognize their achievements at three different levels of difficulty. Active in Dominica since 1968, the award has a respectable history despite occasional spells of dormancy. The national executive is working on reviving the award on an island-wide scale beginning with promotion and sensitization in secondary schools, cadet corps, and other uniform groups. There are currently three established community chapters, Petite Sofria, Grand Fund, and Rosu. According to the organizations, Dominica's youths are enthused about the award program. The group will embark on a summer cultural exchange and expedition to St. Lucia, this activity will occur between Thursday, July 11 and Tuesday, July 23, 2024, with 16 award participants and 8 adults leaders in attendance. The Duke of Edinburgh's International Award, Dominica, will be hosted by the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award, St. Lucia. They will receive wilderness survival training, participate in outdoor expeditions, and exchange with the award program in St. Lucia. They will also participate in a variety of community projects. Now, here's the big question. Who is Duke of Ellington? Who is this Duke of Ellington? 
The Duke of Edinburgh Award was created by Prince Philip Duke of Edinburgh, then the consort of Elizabeth II, Queen of Canada, with the intent of encouraging young people to set and achieve their own goals and challenges. There are three levels, bronze, silver, and gold, but no competition between participants, as it is a personal achievement program, and there are no set standards to measure the achievements. The criteria are based on each participant's improvement and growth. Participants must set goals in multiple program areas, service, skills, physical recreation, an adventurous journey, and an additional project. This award was first launched in Canada in 1963 and opened up to all young Canadians between the ages of 14 and 24. Pilot projects were launched in various cities in Nova Scotia, Ontario, and British Columbia. The following year, one of the first award ceremonies were held, with 48 bronze and 6 silver awards presented, and the first gold award ceremony took place in Ottawa in 1968 then the Duke of Eddington presented 18 recipients with their gold awards. Following the death of Prince Philip in 2021, his youngest son Prince Edward Duke of Edinburgh was made patron of the Duke of Edinburgh's International Award, announced on 14 March 2023, four days after the oldest brother, Charles III, King of Canada, created the Duke of Edinburgh. He had been a trustee of the International Award since 2006. So in short, this award is basically to keep the legacy of Duke Edinburgh alive. And it makes me wonder what is wrong with African Caribbean people, adults, with a history like the one we have. My only question is why are we keeping his legacy alive? Why are we engaging? In such a ward. We cannot do it ourselves. Is that what it is? It really bothers me. And the elders have really disappointed me. As I grew into a man. From a youth. I was always curious. And as I grew. Went through high school and so forth. I started realizing that our elders. Many of them has failed us big time. They are fine. With sitting at the foot of their masters. They are fine with upholding these masters and keeping their legacies alive. No one is even forcing them to do it anymore. Now they are on autopilot. So the common people of the Caribbean, youngsters of the Caribbean, it's up to us, it's up to you to really shake this thing up. It is, it is up to you. No longer will you allow them to keep the legacy of these people alive. No longer will you be used as a vessel to keep these people's legacy alive. We need to break that up. We can do it ourselves. It is time for us to take control of the wagon. It is time for us to use our own people, use our own heroes to do our own thing. And that's what it is. It's no hate. We simply need to control our own stuff because the Caribbean plays such a crucial role in freedom. Remember this now, when the Caribbean gained its independence, when the Caribbean start getting its independence, then everybody else start freeing themselves. So just like the water in the Caribbean, the salt water of the Caribbean, the uniqueness of the Caribbean, the exoticness of the Caribbean, so is the people of the Caribbean. Not all of us, because we always had sellouts. We always had sellouts. The younger generation have to realize that these people are leading you down the road of weakness. They're leading you down a road where you will never be respected. They're leading you down a road to which you will end up losing the islands that your ancestors fought for.